and with the wintertime sailfish season right around the corner, now is the time to get all of your kite fishing gear dialed in, especially the kites themselves. And if you're new to kite fishing, there's some things that you absolutely have to know, otherwise you're gonna have an incredibly frustrating experience. And if you're an experienced kite fisherman, well, you know what, it wouldn't hurt for you to sit in on this as well, so. Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk a little bit about the different size kites and when you fish each. And there's really three, okay, a number of different manufacturers out there. And for display purposes, I'm going to show some Tigris kites, some SFE kites. And really, at the end of the day, I don't care which ones you go with, you know, they're both quality kites. And it's really just up to you. But there's a lot of similarities with all kites. And again, these things can really be temperamental. I like to say kites are like women, right? You have to treat them really, really nice. And sometimes even when you do everything you can, they still flip out. Um, on the other hand, there are sometimes when everything just goes perfect and they're flying just beautifully. Now you've watched a lot of our episodes on kite fishing. If you haven't, I highly recommend check out our complete episodes, check out our rigging stations and pros tips, everything related to kite fishing. Digest as much information as you possibly can because you're gonna need it, I'm gonna tell you right now. So getting back to it, high wind kite, right? It's a smaller kite, it catches less wind, it's got holes in it to allow some of that strong breeze to alleviate through the kite, okay, to pass through the kite so there's less pressure. When do you use a high wind kite? You know, we're talking about 20 knots plus, 25 knots plus. If it's really, really honking, that's when you're gonna wanna pull out a high wind kite. Again, regardless of manufacturer, it's a smaller profile, um, and it's really going to be beneficial in those gusty scenarios, in those gusty situations. From there, we go to our standard size kite. Now, of course, this is an SFE, perhaps the most popular kite out there. They're available in red and green. We designate the colors based on the bow or the stern, so I know that I've got a handful of the red kites that are dialed in for the stern position. Uh, that are going to fly to port and then we've got a bunch of green kites that are dialed in for the bow position that are going to fly to starboard that's if you drift and fish two kites the way we generally do a lot of the charter boats sport fish boats you know they'll put their outriggers out and they'll fish two kites off the stern off the riggers and that's a different animal altogether so standard size kite right there you can see no holes very light standard size probably the best kite that you could buy for the money right here is that sfe and then finally we have a low wind kite which you can see you know just for reference look at the difference in the square footage or the inches with that sfe kite versus the low wind kite you can see it's larger up on top it's larger over on the side there's more sail area we'll call it to catch more wind on a very, you know, calm day with variable winds, five knots or less, you may want to opt for a low wind kite. They're often lighter, lighter material, lighter spars, just an easier product to fly in those conditions when you have no wind at all, regardless if you're using helium balloons or not. Um, but again, you know, using the standard red SFE, which is what you're going to be using probably 90% of the time, okay, is the standard size, maybe more than 90% of the time. There's some things that you really need to be aware of in order to get your kite to perform flawlessly. First is the bridles. So you can see that there are four bridles back here that insert into that little center piece right there. And if you can see on these bridles, I'm going to spin them here. There's a little white slash. There's one right there. There's one right there, one right there, and one right there. I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer, maybe really help you see those white slashes. Well, they all need to be in the same direction, preferably up and facing you. That's important. That's in order to keep those spars all in the correct position, nice and straight. Make sure that they're inserted all of the way, that they're not loose. That's super important. Next, look at the line. Make sure that that line going up the spar is not twisted or wrapped around the spar. Again, successful kite fishing is all about the details. And these kites can be incredibly frustrating even when everything is, you know, in your favor. So you've got to do everything that you can. 
next on the front side of the kite, you'll see that there's a little barrel swivel, right? Right there in the front. Again, you want to make sure here, we'll kind of get closer, that there's nothing tangled there, nothing spinning, that it's tied right there and fastened to the front center of the kite really neatly and no obstructions, nothing, you know, nothing to, to hurt the kite there. And then obviously we've got our bridle system with another barrel swivel right at the front. And again, it's very important when you're flying this kite that the lines are in that triangular position right there. Hopefully you can see that really well. And that down here, right in my fingertips, I've got another little barrel swivel right there. You can see where all those lines are connected. You don't want that to be all cockeyed inside itself, outside itself, all twisted. It's really important that that be nice and straight and everything be neat with no tangles. Here's a good example. You see how it's twisted? right there just that little twist is going to affect how that kite flies whereas once everything is straight and perfect you don't have that problem okay there we go look at that that's the correct way you can see everything is really nice and straight now you also have this little bridle system which allows you to adjust how that kite is flying as far as the height in the sky what do i mean you know obviously if the kite is more we'll call it horizontal, it's going to catch less wind, it's going to stay closer to the water. If it's more vertical, okay, and that's, that's obviously the extremes, your kite's not going to fly like this, you know, we're talking about very slight adjustments that might change the flying attitude of the kite by just a few degrees. But that few degrees from here to here or back to here could make a very big difference based on the conditions that you're facing on any given day, okay? Um, oftentimes you may set it and forget it. Other times you may be making fine tune adjustments until it really is dialed in. There's a little hash mark right on the line. That's a good starting point. That's like your middle of the road. So great starting point, put the bridle right on that hash mark right there and you could start there. From there, make adjustments, but remember very small adjustments. Do not move this little tab three or four inches move it one inch at a time okay just small little adjustments see how the kite flies real important there okay next you know affixing helium balloons to kites is really important it's something that used to be done by connecting the you know the, the i don't want to say the nipple of the kite but where you tie it you know right to the center here and then a piece of fishing line would go over top of the balloon uh, with some black electrical tape that worked and then of course the bridle system came out where you can literally just slide the balloon into a bridle and that works too however the latest and greatest technique is simply to tie your balloon right to the spar about two-thirds of the way up you don't want to go too low you don't want to go way up too high right about in that position 60 to 70 percent you know around like i said around 70 percent up on the kite up on the spar and that's all that you need and that's going to take your kite aloft and keep it more stable up in the air uh, when to use balloons and helium you know if you watch a lot of our shows you'll see that i prefer to use balloons as often as possible for me it's just faster and easier i get my kite up quicker it's more stable when it's flying and even on days when i can get that kite to fly you know 10 12 15 knot winds easily you know, I can get the kite to fly easily without a balloon, I probably will still opt to put a balloon on there. Not necessary, but if I had the choice, I would definitely lean toward the balloon. Okay, it just works for me with a fixed helium system on the boat, but that's a different seminar altogether. Now, very important at the end of each trip, rinse your kites off with fresh water, let them dry, okay, let them air dry. This way they maintain, you know, the, the best possible condition moving forward. Finally, if one of the spars breaks, you really are gonna have a hard time with that kite moving forward. Don't try and replace just the one spar from a different kite, maybe a spare that you have left over. You can see that there is a number on here. It's probably best to call the manufacturer and get a whole new set of spars uh, directly for that particular kite. It's almost like a serial number, I guess we'll call it. So another thing that's real important. At the end of the day, kite fishing is incredibly effective. Obviously, it allows us to present baits on the downwind side of the boat. So just for the sake of 
you know, display purposes, here we are, we're fishing and you know, the wind is blowing from this direction. So the wind is blowing in this direction and our lines, our flat lines are off the starboard side of the boat here. Maybe we've got a deep bait back here in the corner. We've got another flat line way out there. We've got another flat line a little bit closer to the boat, another deep bait in the center and then potentially a fourth, fifth, or even sixth line on the flat side here. So we're covering a lot of water. And then on the downwind side, up in the bow, we've got a kite up in the air that's adjusted to fly to the right with three baits dangling from that kite. And we have the same scenario here off the stern with the kite, and we'll just go ahead and pick that up, with the kite geared toward flying to the left, to the port side of the boat with three lines dangling from this kite. So we've got a dozen lines in the water at any given time. We're covering a lot of water, okay? And we really are increasing our odds tremendously. And finally, I just wanna remind you that you can adjust these kites by adding little split shots to the sides. A couple up on top or on the bottom, and that's gonna affect what direction that kite flies in. So nothing substitutes time spent on the water. You're gonna to have to do a lot of experimenting, a lot of fine tuning, but once you get it dialed in, it's going to be hard to want to fish any other way.